So welcome. This video is going to talk about the user interface as far as the start page and the parsers tab. For information on the open captures tab, I'll have a second video, a part two to the user interface for that. So let's start by looking at the start page, which is uh, the first item. And it shows you basically some information about what is going on as far as network monitor is concerned. And it also has some links. So there's some helpful information there. The next section we can look at is the recent captures. Basically, this shows you a list of all the captures you've used before. And we also have a link to a create a capture as well as a button up here that you can click on to open a new capture file. In the lower right hand corner, we have a select networks tab. The select networks allows you to choose which adapters you're going to capture on. You can also configure the properties and in the case of wireless sniffing, you can configure those settings so you can sniff management packets. But the properties of a, a local adapter will just show you um, basic information about that, uh, Nick. Another item we have down here is the P mode button, which allows you to set promiscuous mode. Without promiscuous mode, you only capture traffic that your computer is listening to. This might include machines that uh, communicate with you directly as well as broadcasts meant for all network adapters. If you're on a hub with two other computers, you won't capture traffic between those two computers unless promiscuous mode or P mode is enabled for that adapter. Also realize that these days there's smart hubs and switches that will often block the promiscuous tr mode traffic. So even with P mode enabled, capturing this third party traffic may require you to configure your switch. Now some switches allow you to do mirroring or spanning, which takes the physical ports and duplicates that traffic to one of the other ports where you can capture from. So this in combination with P mode may be necessary to view all this server traffic. So finally on the start page, we'll go over the help that's available in the product. And we'll start over here on the right side where we have a how do I menu. It shows you some general topics about uh, how to configure things, how to do simple filtering, and it's context sensitive based on which tab you're on. We also have a help menu which has the same information, the how do I's, as well as the contents for using the UI in general. And finally, we have a help file that explains the NPL, which is the Netmon parsing language, as well as our new API, which allows you to access the engine programmatically, as well as the capture engine. So that's our view of the start page. Now let's go over to the parsers tab. Now you might not spend a lot of time in the parsers tab, but it is important for at least one thing. If, when Network Monitor 3.2 ships, we enable a smaller parser set, and this is to make it run quicker. But there might be situations where you have traffic that won't be parsed without making a change to Network Monitor. And actually in the subject line of the summary, it will say, it'll give you instructions to go look at the full parser set. So there is this section of the help, which is load full parsers. And it shows you what to do to load these parsers. I'm going to show you real quick how to do this. I'm going to use the options button to bring up the menu. And you'll see there's four tabs here. The third tab is the parsers tab. And this has a list of all the directories we look into for the MPL files. And it's done in order of the list displayed here. So parsers, the top one is search first, and then the second one, and so on. So what we need to do is we have two directories down here. And by the way, this user interface probably will change by the time we ship. But you can take this and move it up one and this will give you the full set and then once you do that you can go ahead and select the the reload parsers button here 
and then it'll load the new parser setup. You can also select this reload button, and this also builds the parsers for you. So there's no difference, it's just more convenient that it's in that dialog. So the next thing I'll show you is on the left side is a organized view basically of the the NPL namespace as well as the objects in the engine. So here you can see that they're listed by the protocol names such as uh, ARP might be one you recognize and this allows you to search around for objects and open them up more simply. So I can go ahead, I'm going to open up TCP I'll start typing TC and I'll get to that section and there it is that protocol as you can see so I'm gonna double click on it and open it up and you'll see that it first highlights it in yellow to kind of highlight the section to look at because sometimes it's a small it could be an object a structure that's smaller um, that will go away and then you can go ahead and edit the file save it and then reload the parsers again if you want to see what changed now the, the couple of reasons you might want to visit this is if you wanted to do some small modifications such as changing a summary that so it looks better for what you need to look at or to add a property perhaps so you can display it as a column and finally there's the message section of the parsers tab which just basically shows you the errors that have occurred when you reload the parsers. In this case, it's a blue symbol, so that means it's not really an error, it's just a status message. But if you saw red or yellow shield in the status area, that might indicate there was a problem and either an error has occurred in something you've added or another possibility is that you've upgraded and some of the parsers that you referenced before are not up to date or need to be changed to work with the newest version. So that's the tour of the start page and the parsers tab. Um, go to part two if you want to see a tour of the capture tab. Well thanks for watching and until next time.